Hello! Today let's go ahead and take a look at a parallel RL circuit. Our voltage source is 5 volts peak to peak running at 2 kilohertz. Our inductor is 100 millihenries and our resistor is 1.2 K. First thing we want to look at is our totals. Our voltage total of course is 5 volts. Our inductive reactance X of L can be found by the formula 2 times pi times F times L. That is 2 times 3.14 times 2K times 100 milli. So we have 2 times pi times 2 exponent 3, which is K, times 100 exponent negative 3, which is milli. And that gives us an inductive reactance of 1.257 kilo ohms. Now normally our next step would be to find our impedance total. If this was two resistors, we could use the product over some formula. The problem is, is that inductive reactance and resistance cannot just be added together. So it really makes that formula complicated. So what we're going to do is we're going to use Kirchhoff's law to find the Z total. So we're going to go ahead next and look at our individual values and then find I total from there. Let's go ahead and store the value for inductive reactance. Let's go ahead and start with our resistor. Now this is a parallel circuit and if you remember voltage remains the same in a parallel. So my VR is 5 volts. Using Ohm's law we can find IR which states that VR divided by R. So we have 5 volts divided by 1.2 kilo ohms. So we have 5 divided by 1.2 exponent 3. And that gives us a current of 4.167 milliamps. I'll go ahead and store this value. Next, we can find PR using Watt's law. PR is IR times VR. So that's 4.167 milli times 5 volts. So I'll go ahead and I'll recall my current and multiply it times 5. And that gives us a power of 20.833 milliwatts. Next, let's look at the inductor. Again, VL is going to be 5 volts. IL is going to be found by VL divided by X of L. So we have 5 volts divided by 1.257K. So I have 5 divided by, and I'll go ahead and I'll recall my value for X of L. And that gives us a current of 3.979 milliamps. I will go ahead and store that value. Next let's find PL. PL is going to be IL times VL. So we have 3.979 milli times 5. So I'll go ahead and I'll recall my current and multiply it times 5. And that gives us a power of 19.8954 milliwatts. Now it's time to go ahead and find I total. Now, Kirchhoff's law states that the sum of both current branches must equal the source current. However, in this case, we cannot just add IR and IL together. We have to do something similar to what we did for Z total in a series circuit. So I total is equal to the square root of IR squared plus IL squared. So that means that we're going to have 4.167 milli squared plus 3.979 milli squared. So what we're going to do is we're going to recall our resistor current and square it 
plus. Recall our inductor current and square it. And that gives us the square root of 33.193. I'll go ahead and hit the square root. And we have a current of 5.761 milliamps. Now that we have I total, we can go ahead and find Z total. Utilizing Ohm's law, we can find that Z total is equal to V total divided by I total. That's 5 volts divided by 5.761 milli. So I'm going to do 5 divided by. Second function, recall my current. And that gives us an impedance of 867.86 .86 ohms. I'll go ahead and store that value. Now P total is equal to I total times V total. So that's 5.761 milli times 5. So I'll go ahead and recall my current and then just multiply it times 5. And we get a power of 28.806 milliwatts. Now our last step is to go ahead and find theta or our phase shift. Our phase shift is the inverse tangent of IL divided by IR. So that's the inverse tangent of 3.979 milli divided by 4.167 milli. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to recall my inductor current and divided by my resistor current and now I'm going to go ahead and hit the inverse tangent of it and that gives us 63.68 degrees now at this point our circuit is complete but what I wanted to do was finish the circuit by going ahead and doing my total impedance Z using the product over sum and it's up to you if you wish to see this long process. All right, so let's go ahead and look at Z using product over sum. The formula would be R times X of L over the square root of R squared plus X of L squared. And as you can see, this is going to be a very lengthy formula. So we have 1.2K times 1.257K over the square root of 1.2k squared plus 1.257k squared. So let's go ahead and start. 1.2 exponent 3 times, and I'll go ahead and I'll recall my inductive reactants, and it's 1.5079 mag. And we'll go ahead and, whoops, we'll go ahead and store this right there. And now what we're going to go ahead and do is the bottom part. 1.2 exponent 3 squared plus the recall of our inductive reactants squared equals and then we're going to go ahead and store this underneath there now remember we did not square root this bottom number so I'm going to go ahead and square root it and store that value and finally what I'm going to do is recall top part divided by recall of the bottom part and we end up with 867.86 ohms and as you see it's possible to do this formula but it's a lot quicker to utilize Kirchhoff's current law to find it instead of using product over sum where there's many areas that we could have 
easily screwed up doing our calculations. Well, I hope you enjoyed this. Thank you for watching.